All right, so today we have the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now, every generation, the camera seems to be getting better and better, but what recently came out is the ability to shoot in ProRes. But let me go ahead and get started by shooting a few things in ProRes and intercutting it with some footage out of this Canon C70 and see how obvious it is whenever I switch between the two cameras. Beautiful here. Is that a massive penis that someone carved out? Well, over there. <laughs> so I write on any? No. Your accuracy was maybe like 50%. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. No, but that's, I, they, dude, that's not that good. That's no, like I thought literally you were going to say 15%. Foot. So I, it's like, it's no, I mean, 15. there's only two options. Like, if you literally flipped a coin, you would probably get 50%. I'm trying, trying to have good. something here. Okay. <laughs> like, so you thought this first shot here was a professional camera? I thought, but I guess not. You probably thought that because of the depth of field. The background's actually a bit blurry, so that's usually a sign of a professional camera. But with the iPhone 13 Pro Max having that bigger sensor, you can actually achieve shallow depth of field. So this is actually oh, okay. iPhone. That's iPhone. No, this is C70. So all slow-mo shots are from the professional camera. How about this one? Uh, iPhone. You call this one out accurately. Yes. It's just the way she was moving. There's something about the motion of it that caught my eye and it just made me feel more like iPhone. Did it feel almost like overly sharpened in terms of just like the motion? I guess, yeah, that would be. Okay, I think what you're looking at is the fast shutter speed, which is correct because okay. on the professional camera, the shutter speed's locked in. The iPhone is kind of just doing whatever and every time okay. it gets brighter or darker, it kind of just does its own thing. That is not iPhone. That is iPhone. <sighs> <laughs> what, did, what did you say? It's German. Now the biggest giveaway for this shot is that it's very stabilized and I didn't have a gimbal while I was out there. Okay. Now the iPhone stabilization is really good to where it can look like you're on a gimbal even if you're just walking around being all bumpy. Now one of these shots is iPhone and one of these is professional. That's the iPhone. When he swings his hand around it has that Kind of, I guess oh, okay. Work. So your main giveaway is the shutter speed being fast. That's yeah. interesting because for me, my biggest giveaway is the artificial sharpening. So here, everything uh, looks really natural, right? But then you look at the iPhone shot and all yeah. the details in the back are almost overly sharpened. And then you look at the image and you go, oh, wow, that's sharp. But in reality, it should look a little bit more flat like this. Now it can come down to preference. Sometimes people like the super sharpened look but most of the time in a professional camera, you don't have to actually add in any sharpening. Professional camera, that's professional camera, that's iPhone. The biggest giveaway here is that little green lens flare you see over Carrie's jacket right there. Now the reason why that flare is jumping around like that is because the camera is stabilizing the image but it can't stabilize the flare. So the flare is jumping around even though everything else looks nice and even. Regular camera or professional. Professional? Were you expecting it to be this hard to tell the difference? I guess not, no. I mean, I knew they were coming out with better cameras. I just, it's like, oh, so we're basically almost at the same level unless you knew what you're looking for. But it is case by case. So we will try out a few more scenarios where the difference might be more obvious or maybe not as different as we thought. So the next one we will do with the A7S and the iPhone, and we will shoot our sponsorship segment, Storyblocks. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I can talk. So some awesome news. We went out and shot this epic story block segment, but when we got back, we realized that the audio files had gone corrupt. So we don't have any good audio to go with this. Such a bummer, but this is the type of situation where story blocks really comes into play. You rarely get all the shots you need or the drone shots or the time lapses. So story blocks is there to help patch up your work or make it better. Or if you want, you could just create an entire video with their stock footage and images and music and sound effects. They have a massive collection of over a million stock assets. There's also Premiere and After Effects templates. So if making crazy graphics like this is really intimidating to you, then don't worry. You just have to hit download, swap out a few things, and everyone thinks you actually know what you're doing. Isn't that great? And with their affordable unlimited all access plan, you have access to all of this and unlimited downloads. So link down there in the description. Thanks again to Storyblocks for sponsoring this episode. All right, so now we have a better idea of how the cameras look. Let's go to the next round of footage and see if you can tell the difference. 
Uh, uh. And action. I gotta say the difference between the phones and pro cameras is getting slimmer and slimmer every time I make one of these videos. I mean before they would both look really good but as soon as you go into low light it was a dead giveaway that the iPhone wasn't nearly as good but here it's holding up pretty damn good. All right so I'm dragging Carrie into this and she's gonna try to call out some of the shots. Let's see how accurate you are. Okay iPhone. iPhone. A7. A7. Uh, maybe A7. iPhone. A7. iPhone. Uh, I don't know. They're going so fast. Uh, iPhone. A7. <laughs> it's hard. It was so fast. The cuts were so fast. I didn't have an opportunity to really get a good look at it. So you may be wondering why people spend thousands on camera when an iPhone is pretty dang close. Yeah, I'm wondering why we have so many cameras then. <laughs> <laughs> now, camera itself is very important on creating the image, but the lens selection can be just as or maybe even more important to the image. That's why we also have a lot of lenses. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so far, we've been using the 16 to 35 F4, which is my kind of go to vlog lens, but swung by the room, swapped it out for the 35 to 150, and opens up to F2.0. Let's see how this competes. All right, Carrie, this is your chance to redeem yourself. iPhone. A7. iPhone. A7. iPhone. A7. You got everyone right this time. Oh. <laughs> Was this a lot easier? I think so, yeah. The difference is all in that lens. Like the iPhone is technically great for what it can do, but when it comes to the lens options, you're rather limited. The low light performance is great on the 1X lens, but if you go into the ultra wide or telephoto, you immediately see it's not nearly as good. Now on a pro camera, choosing the right lens is everything. And it's not like there's the best lens that's perfect for everything. It's kind of like musical instruments, you know? It's not like one instrument is superior to all others, even though the dude with the guitar is always getting all the chicks and the guy with the clarinets over there just like what the hell dude i'm a piano player myself i was kind of forced into it but you probably already knew that so so far everything we've shot on this iphone has been in pro res 422 hq which is a codec or basically a type of compression so you shoot something with your lens and sensor and that file gets compressed down to smaller file sizes like hd64 is very small and it looks pretty good hd65 is even more compressed but the goal is to maintain a good looking image with small file sizes ProRes, on the other hand, is just like a slight, er, it's barely compressed, it's visually lossless, which means massive file sizes, but you maintain all those details. Is it worth shooting in ProRes on the iPhone? I would say most of the time, no, because you could have a file size that's a fraction of the size and pretty much get a very similar looking image. I would be more interested in this ProRes if there was an option to shoot a log format so I can color grade it pretty heavily, but right now I don't see any options like that. Even in Filmic Pro, there's no option to go flat. The basic codec seems to be pretty good already until you switch over to slow motion. That's where I feel like the codec really has a hard time staying together and keeping that quality up. So if there was a way to put slow-mo in ProRes, that would be awesome, but I just think the phone can't really handle that because that's a lot of data to process very fast. But it is nice knowing that there is ProRes available in here, especially if that's the codec we want our workflow to be in. And also if I'm just trying to get the best possible image out of this camera possible, then that's how you would do it at the cost of massive files. Now I have some cine lenses that open up to T1.5 and cinematic mode on the iPhone is supposed to digitally emulate it. So we'll see how these two compare.
All right, what's interesting about this is that this is kind of like real depth of field versus fake depth of field. Now we've had fake depth of field in portrait mode and stills for a while now, but we're starting to finally see it in video and it's not quite there yet. You could definitely look at it and see that there's like a glow going on around the edges. It's not a perfect cutout. Dylan, what do you think? It's close, but yeah, I don't know. The, what the glow thing you're talking about, it just stands out so much to me. Yeah, it's like not a perfect cutout. I don't know how they make cinematic mode look so good in the Apple commercials, but in real world use, it looks like this more often. And they're definitely on the right track though. Sometimes it's not bad at all. Like this shot here, it's almost convincing. Like it takes me a second to see for sure if it's real or fake. But once you look at it close enough, it becomes a little bit more obvious. But I don't know. I mean, it's getting there. The iPhone looks a lot more vibrant. Yeah, the color? Yeah. Well, that is the color grade. So we can, of course, take the C70 and adjust the colors and saturation and all that. There's a couple times where I missed focus, right? I couldn't track you. With the iPhone, you can actually adjust where the focus goes afterwards because it has that LiDAR depth information. But man, I love your dance though. Where'd oh. you learn those moves, man? I just made it up on my own. <laughs> Out of my own mind. One of these days we're gonna make an episode like this, but we're not gonna even be able to tell the difference between the two. Three generations down the line, am I gonna start being like, I don't know what camera that was shot on? You know, especially if they give us more versatility on how much it's sharpened and all that stuff. It's getting there. The technology is getting pretty insane. After checking out the footage, I think the big takeaway from this video is that it's all about the lenses. Like, see how I have all that unorganized crap back there and it's all messy. My background doesn't look that nice. Well, there, now we're at f2.8. Oh my gosh, it doesn't look nearly as distracting anymore. It still actually doesn't look that great. I was hoping it would just like get really soft. I would need to go to a prime lens for that. But anyways, I think I should probably make a video where I just go into detail about lenses, trying to pick out what lenses, what to look Look for and all that i don't know is that something that you would think would be useful because if so i will make that video but if you want me to just go do dumb stuff i'll do that too i don't really care i'm here for you guys all right so let me know in the comments if you have questions about lenses if you have trouble picking out lenses then i want to help you i gotta wrap this up here so i can upload a video because i'm trying to stay more consistent and it's really tough to stay consistent on things when you have adhd as hardcore as me but anyways uh see you guys later